see 45 votes, how will they be assigned and will they be developmental or are they one design? Uh, the AC 45s first part is, is <coughs> how will they be assigned. Um, what we're doing with boat one is effectively we'll have a six week window where boat one will be the only boat that will be sailing. We will be drawing up a, a roster probably in periods of somewhere around a week that we will rotate the competitors, the, red, the validated competitors um, through that boat on a, a, a trial sailing basis. The delivery of the boats is really dictated to us by um, the entry received from Golden Gate Yacht Club. Um, so there's, there's two parts. One there is the entry through Golden Gate, which ranks them in terms of their ordering, and then there is them actually, the competitor, going into a contract to purchase the boat and, um, and coming good. So the order of receiving the contract and the order of entry could be different, and we're holding the order of entry uh, up until a time period, and we'll put out a notice to that effect shortly, probably be Christmas, where we will keep basically the building slots in that order. Um, if we haven't seen received build contracts, um, we will then, you know, we, we will roll on to the next person. So that's that's how we're dealing with it. And then the other part of the question, once they get their boats, can they be developmental boats? Uh, no, the, the AC-45s will race in the World Series as one design boats. Um, what is not one design is the soft sails. Um, and, and, you know, we, we haven't written the AC-45 rule. That, that will be, you know, one of the very first jobs of the measurement committee. Um, we looked at, you know, developmental wings. We looked at developmental foils on the boat. Um, and we decided that, you know, there's a lot to do with these boats. There's a lot for us to understand with the race courses. There's a lot for the teams to understand in actually sailing these particular boats to dealing with solid wing sails and the rotation and twist angles and looking at lumpy solid things as opposed to smooth aerodynamic sails. So in the first year, you know, the, to use the keep it simple approach, we elected to to limit it um, because we, we want good sailing as opposed to a development race. Uh, we need to learn about the racing of the America's Cup going the future is our focus. The teams are allowed to make those developments but and they can do that in their own time. Um, but it's not as easy as you think, like putting a, a development wing on is a relatively easy thing because you unbolt one and put a new one on. Um, development foils is is possible, but it's you know if they if they're curved foils or they're different angle foils or adjustable angle foils um, that will be allowed in the 72 class. It's probably a fair old boat building operation to to re-engineer the middle of the boat. So that's unlikely to happen in the, the process of the World Series. There's nothing to stop a team having a second boat that is. Uh, working in a developmental role, um, but it won't be able to compete in the World Series. Um, what's going to be the format for the AC-45 regattas? Um, because I can give you kind of some of the race course there as well. Yeah, we're looking at um, uh, two weekends inclusive period for a regatta. Um, we're looking to have quite a lot of fleet racing, um, and Richard can probably speak more to this. But we are pushing hard for the final day um, to be our television day, hopefully live television. And Richard's working with all the media partners around the world. But you know, we very much want the last day to be our showcase. Um, probably something in the order of television package race format that takes, say, one hour, um, and that the winner will be produced, and we will have all the normal parts of high profile sporting events conclusion to a successful week. Um, my personal thoughts are that you know what we're looking at is that we will fleet race on the first weekend, we'll fleet race on Friday, Saturday, Sunday the last and Sunday being the finale. We will have periods of time during the week that 
we could use as um, lay day time. We can run a separate match racing event, um, or we can dedicate to the teams for for trialling. Um, that's something that we will detail in the competitive forums when we can work with them to try to work out what is in the best interest of everyone. But it will work backwards from the Sunday. And, and the actual courses themselves? The courses, uh, yeah, we, we venue dependent. Um, we, we very much are working on trying to have compacted courses. Uh, close to the shore we're working on a format where we're using seven fixed marks and effectively two marks at the bottom, the start line, probably two thirds to three quarters of the way up the top, single top mark, and two other marks, of a mark out to the right of the top mark and a mark in the middle. And we will have a configuration of up and down and out to beam reaching um, gates and bits and pieces. Our plan is to adjust the two bottom marks to tailor the length of the course to, to get the timing to the right length. So depending on the runway we have um, we'll, and the wind speed, it will determine you know, the actual configuration of the course. But we're looking, the other thing that I think is important is of course that we will be putting boundaries on the side of the course. Um, the last thing we actually want is two boats to go around the two bottom marks, one go left, one go right, go out to the lay lines, tack, see them again at the top. We will be forcing the boats back into the middle and, um, and have boundaries on the side of the course so that you know we don't have that situation developing. Well, what's the optimum time limit for a race? Well, Richard would tell me it would be 45 minutes. Is that what we Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a very wide discussion actually, but if, you, if you're trying to create a made-for-television event, um, you then have to work with, you know, realistic broadcaster schedules to tell you, okay, what can fit in that? It's, um, and that requires a bit of further discussion yet, but that's the kind of time length that we anticipate can, can you know, can work on. If you're, if you're really uh, ambitious about providing live television coverage, then, yeah, to go for longer than that is really not a commercial option. The traditionalists would probably like the race to be longer in time than that. Um, you know, I know my first race in the America's Cup were around four and a half hours. You know, to sail 20 something miles in Newport, they were long days. And, um, you know, we progressed down to approximately three hours in Fremantle and two hours in San Diego and, you know, relatively short periods. And then I guess you take a modern day look at the Olympics where, you know, 49 races and bits and pieces of taking 10 and 12 minutes. You know, the balance is in having a quality race. Um, we do have to, you know, be mindful of the heritage of the America's Cup and we certainly don't want to lose the values of high quality racing. So, you know, we have to balance all those things out. And they will vary day to day. Um, you know, it's certainly a fundamental thing, um, which is part of the event authority's brief and, and our involvement is, is the venues that are being looked at and selected is a very major objective is that they have good quality high percentage race courses. In terms of the wind? Yeah. How many boats do you expect to be start by the <laughs> Well, we look if we if we have eight to ten teams competing in the America's Cup, um, we would like to, we will think that's a very good result. We'll be very happy with that. It's not to say that we could have multiple teams, we, we could have multiple boats from the teams, so, you know, it's, it, it's possible that in the World Series, if we had ten teams, we could have twenty boats. But um, I don't think it's likely, but we could. How many can you build? Building is another problem. <laughs> um, yeah, that's. I think by the time the boats are due to leave Auckland, we we should be able to have ten platforms built. 
Um, we won't have 10 wings built by that period of time. Um, so we're working on our plan that if the wings aren't built, that we will be air freighting them um, to catch up with the boats. Given that the deadline for entry is the end of March, would it be possible for a team to enter by the end of March, but actually choose to not compete in 45 and just jump straight ahead? Currently that's an issue with the protocol and the, and the bonds and yeah, look, they could do it, but the protocol would say that they would have to make their bonds, they'd lose their bonds. Um, it's an expensive way of, of doing it. That's not something that, you know, we want to work with. Um, I think it's fair to say that we are, you know, now we're on board and we fully understand the build process, the time involved, um, you know, what's in front of all the competitors, what they need to do, the hurdles is that we're looking at all of that and, and um, you know, we want to help the teams. We want to help teams get there. And so if, if we'll be talking to various people and if we need to to uh, make changes in that area, we will, we will look at it. So certainly what you say, you know, if you order in March, being on a start line three and a half months later, you know, is a big ask. We're currently... We are building 10 boats right now, um, so you know 